Heat me these irons hot. And look, thou stand within the arras. When I strike my foot upon the bosom of the ground, rush forth and bind the boy which you shall find with me fast to the chair. Be heedful. Heads at watch. I hope your warrant will bear out the deed. Uncleanly scruples, fear not you. Look to it. Young lad, come forth. I have to say with you. Good morrow, Hubert. Good morrow, little prince. As little prince, having so great a title to be more prince as may be. You are sad. Indeed, I have been there, yeah. Mercy on me. Methinks nobody should be sad but I. Yet I remember, when I was in France, young gentlemen would be as sad as night only for wantonness. By my Christendom, so I were out of prison and kept sheep, I should be as merry as the day is long. And so I would be here. But that I doubt, my uncle practices more harm to me. He is afraid of me, and I of him. Is it my fault that I was Geoffrey's son? No, indeed it's not. And I would to heaven I were your son, so you would love me, Hubert. If I talk to him with his innocent praise, he will awake my mercy, which lies dead. Therefore I will be sudden and dispatch. Are you sick, Hubert? Eh? You look pale today. In sooth, I would you were a little sick, that I might sit all night and watch with you. I warrant I love you more than you do me. His words to take possession of my bosom. Read here, young Arthur. Oh, now, foolish room, turning this piteous torture out of door, I must be brief, lest resolution drop out of mine eyes in tender womanish tears. Can you not read it? Is it not fair writ? Oh, too fairly, Hubert, for so foul effect. Must you, with hot irons, burn out both mine eyes? Young boy, I must. And will you? And I will. Have you the heart? When your head did but ache, I knit my handkerchief about your brows. The best I had. A princess wrought it me. And I did never ask it you again. And with my hand at midnight held your head, and like the watchful minutes to the hour, still and anon cheered up the heavy time, saying, What lack you? And where lies your grief? Or what good love may I perform for you? Many a poor man's son would have lain still, and ne'er have spoke a loving word to you. But you at your sick service had a prince. Nay, you may think my love was crafty love and call it cunning. Do and if you will. If heaven be pleased that you must use me ill, why then you must. Will you put out mine eyes? These eyes that never did nor never shall so much as frown on you. I have sworn to do it. And without irons must I burn them out. Ah, none but in this iron age would do it. The iron of itself, though heat red hot, approaching near these eyes would drink my tears and quench this fiery indignation, even in the matter of my innocence. Nay, after that consume away in rust, but for containing fire to harm mine eye. Are you more stubborn hard than hammered iron? And if an angel should have come to me and told me Hubert should put out mine eyes, I would not have believed him. No tongue but Hubert's. Oh, oh. Come forth! Do as I bid you. Oh, save me, Hubert, save me! Yeah. My eyes are out even with the fierce looks of these bloody men. Give me the iron, I say, uh, and bind it here. That's why you give me so boisterous wrath. I will not struggle. I will stand stone still. For heaven's sake, Hubert, let me not be bound. Nay, hear me, Hubert. Drive these men away, and I will sit as quiet as a lamb. I will not stir, nor wince, nor speak a word. Or look upon the eye angrily. Thrust but these men away, and I'll forgive you whatever torment you do put me to. Go, stand within. Let me alone with him. I am best pleased to be from such a deed. Thus. I then have chid away my friend. He hath a stern look, but a gentle heart. Let him come back, that his compassion may give life to yours. Good boy, prepare yourself. Is 
there no remedy? None but to lose your eyes. Oh, heaven. That there were but a mote in yours, a grain, a dust, and that a wandering hair. Any annoyance in that precious sense. Then feeling what small things are boisterous there, your vile intent must needs seem horrible. Is this your promise? Go to hold your tongue. You, but the utterance of a brace of tongues must needs want bleeding for a pair of eyes. Let me not hold my tongue. Let me not, Hubert. Oh, Hubert, if you will, cut out my tongue so I may keep mine eyes. I'll spare mine eyes, though to no use but still to look on you. Oh, well, my troth, the instrument is cold and would not harm me. I can heat it, boy. No, in good sooth the fire is dead with grief, being created for comfort, to be used in undeserved extremes. See else yourself, there is no malice in this burning coal. The breath of heaven hath blown his spirit out and strewed repentant ashes on his head. But with my breath, I can revive it, boy. And if you do, you but make it blush and glow with shame of your proceedings, Hubert. Nay, he perchance will sparkle in your eyes. And like a dog that is compelled to fight, snatch at his martyr that doth tar him on. All things that you should use to do me wrong deny their office. Only you do lack that mercy which fierce fire and iron extends. Creatures of note for mercy lacking uses. Well, see to live. I will not touch thine eye for all the treasure that thine uncle owes. Yet I am sworn, and I did purpose, boy, with the same very iron to burn them out. Oh, now you look like Hubert. All this while you were disguised. Oh, peace, no more. Adieu. Your uncle must not know, but you are dead. I'll fill these dogged spies with false reports. And pretty child, sleep doubtless and secure that Hubert, for the wealth of all the world, will not offend thee. Oh, heaven. I thank you, Hubert. Silence. No more. Go closely in with me. Much danger do I undergo for thee. Will I leap down? Good ground be pitiful and hurt me not. There's few or none do know me. If they did, this shipboy's semblance hath disguised me quite. I am afraid, and yet I'll venture it. If I get down and do not break my limbs, I'll find a thousand shifts to get away. It's good to die and go. Let's die and stay. <laughs> Oh, me, my uncle's spirit is in these stones. Heaven take my soul, and England keep my bones. Uh. 